Well, here we are, the Proving Grounds, north of Detroit, the Michigan Ford Proving Grounds. This is really cool, great history about this place. And it's been around here for a long time. They got a lot of acreage here, a lot of animals running around here, a lot of tracks, a lot of hill climbs. We just took a 40,000 pound trailer up a 7% grade with a new high output Ford diesel. So we're gonna cover a lot of things in all these videos. It's gonna take a lot of them to get the whole story in. It's amazing stuff out here. And I got a few more trucks to drive. So come join us for all these reviews. Now this one, <laughs> this truck here, a 110 dually two wheel drive, single cab, has a payload of 8,000 pounds. Can you believe that? 8,000 pounds, man. That's a whole nother truck and a half coming behind you. But that, that's how stout they're making these. And you can see how level it is, 8,000 pounds. The front axle, the back axle, it's not like it's squatting. No, it's in great shape. Ford's doing a really good job with his new 2023 Super Duties. It's Dan with MrTruck.com and we're here somewhere north of Detroit in <laughs> Ford, Michigan Proving Grounds. Check, checking out the 2000, is it 23 or 24? 23. 23, they're still on the 23. And we're checking out the new engines. And right now I am with Sean... Spanbauer. That's who it is. <laughs> You're the big engineer on these engines. Correct, yep. And this is a 6.7, which got, it's a high output 6.7, so it's got well, different turbos, all kinds of crazy things. And it's 500 horsepower and 1,200 pound feet of torque. So what's new and improved? I mean, how'd you get all the extra power? Yeah, so this is something we're really proud of, our brand new high output engine for 23. Um, in order to get more torque and more power, you need more fuel to start out with. So we've upped the displacement of the high pressure common rail fuel pump. Okay. We've upped the injector nozzle flow rates by about 6% to get that additional fuel in the cylinders when we want it. Okay. Uh, so we've got more fuel. We also need more air to burn that fuel. Yep, so we've got an upgraded fuel system that can deliver more fuel. We've also got a water-cooled compressor housing. So you can see right here, there's an inlet and an outlet for yeah. cold coolant to go through the compressor housing. There's actually a water jacket cast right into the compressor housing. So as you're building boost on a turbocharger, not only are you building pressure, but you're also building temperature. At some point, that temperature starts to become a problem. So as we're building all that boost, we want to pull temperature out of it so we can push even more boost pressure. So that's what we've done with this turbocharger by cooling it locally right there. So what that allows us to do is with a single turbocharger, we can build 35 PSI of positive boost pressure at peak torque 1600 rpm even by the time you get to peak power at 2600 rpm you're just below 30 pounds so it will do that all day long with that cool compressor housing so we've got more fuel more air uh, in cylinder we've dropped the compression ratio from 15.8 to 15.2 in order to keep our peak firing pressures in check Wow, um, I remember they were 20 to 1, so all the diesels right. had, and so now they're way down. We're getting pretty low with this engine um, in order to just keep everything nice and healthy for long life durability, just trying to not stress the engine out. Um, so we've made a lot of torque, we've made a lot of power, we've also made a lot of heat with that. So what we've also done is we've upgraded to premium stainless exhaust manifolds and turbine up pipes. You can see them right back here. So this is a hot V, V8 layout. So our exhaust manifolds are inboard right here. So one here, one here. And then these turbine up pipes are also stainless steel in order to accommodate the elevated temperatures that we now have with the high output. Um, we've also had to make changes that are not obvious on the outside. We've got brand new cylinder heads with increased cooling capacity with different water jacketing internally. Uh, this engine makes a lot of heat. So we've got to handle that. Um, so that's really the big enablers of what gives us class leading 1,200 foot pounds of 500 horsepower. Yeah, that's a lot, a lot of power. Now, but that too, you're talking about the cooling and you know, you've got water jacket going through the, what, the bearing on the turbo? It, it's right around, you know, you got a, a compressor wheel that everybody's seen the bladed wheels and then you've got a housing that fits tightly right against that. Um, so it's really the housing that's 
compressed right up against the compressor wheel blades that's now force cooled with liquid cooling. Okay, so it's the air, it's cooling off the air exactly. and the bearing, it, 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 everything yeah. in that area. Yep. Well, that's so cool, because I remember when I first started running water through the through the bearings on there to cool them off, and right. a lot of times, you know, you could, you could just shut an engine off and that centrifugal force or whatever would just let it keep spinning and pumping water through it. Right, you know, yeah. Like the old diesels, like the semis I used to drive, you had a certain amount of time to cool them down. Right, yeah. All the, that. The cool the whole, turbo. Yeah, the whole rotating assembly on the turbocharger is cooled in order to, you know, with old school, like you're saying, old school turbos, if you got them hot and shut them down, you could really just coke that oil onto the shaft. Oh, was, yeah. There was so much heat there that the oil would just boil and bake. Yeah. Um, so, we don't do that anymore. <laughs> no, no, it's a good idea. I like this, it's pretty cool. That's a lot of power, and that's awesome. EGR cooler. Oh, that's yep. neat, okay, that's the new EGR cooler. Y yeah, wow. it, it's largely a carryover design. Um, it, it's a pretty sizable item, you can see. Yeah. Um, the, the intake on this thing, it, it, it's kind of a unique layout on this engine. So, Starting up here on the top, this is the already compressed, already intercooled air. You can see where it splits into yeah. both banks. Um, what that does then is it connects into the intake manifolds that are actually cast right into the valve cover. So what would conventionally be just a cam cover is now also the intake manifold. Um, you can see that if you step over here, in the cutaway engine. And this is the old engine. This, this is, is the, the old the engine. standard engine, yeah. But it's still a pretty valuable tool to show people. Um, you, know, you can see that there's hollow runners here to act as the intake manifold. Oh, yeah. And then also coming into the intake ports right here and then feeding into cool. the cylinder. So that this is still a fairly large engine, but it's got to fit in a pickup truck, and we've got to make it as compact as we can. So we've We've integrated all of that into the uh, the heads well, just to cool. make it as compact as well, possible. This is your standard 6.7, and this is a break a down of what the, uh, the, EGR the EGR cooler looks like. You see the rods going through it. I remember back when the old days when we had that six liter diesel, it had all kinds of problems with the EGR right. cooler. You guys keep solving all the problems on these trucks. But I remember back when Super Duty first came out in 1999, they were one of the first ones to have an intercooler after Cummins. And you know all the things that, that came out in that first Super Duty year, but that's awesome. Is there anything else we need to talk about on this? I mean, it's got a giant filter giant down there. Giant oil filter. Yeah, I mean, that's two quart. That's good. And it, the new one also has a bigger pan, right? On the it, new high-powered one, a little bigger pan. We, we put more oil in the pan okay. um, to enable an up to 15,000 mile oil change interval. Yeah. Um, so. You know, if you're doing heavy towing, you will get less than that. But if you're using your truck as just a, a light duty commuter, you can get now up to 15,000 miles. Yeah, because you guys had a severe duty rating where you know, it, if you're pulling traders, you got to do it more often. Right, yeah. All so, service intervals. Exactly. So just watch the oil minder. It will tell you when it needs to be serviced. Well, that's cool. I'm sure you're going to sell both engines. We always waited for a high output, but the other one was wonderful. I, mean, right. I remember when this came out, was it 2014? Uh, 2011, 2011, the 6.7 liter came out. Okay, 2011. So incremental improvements ever since then came all the way from 390 horsepower, now at 500. Wow. That's 500. What's this horsepower? So this one is carryover power at 475 horsepower. Okay, 475, yeah. 1050 foot pounds. That's still quite a bit. It's still nothing wrong pretty, with those numbers. Nobody's complaining about it right now. It's pretty exceptional. Yeah, that's cool. Well, now we're going to look at the gas engines. That's somebody else. It is. Well, thanks, Sean. Thank you. Don't go away, Mr. Chuck.TV. We'll be right back. <laughs> okay, now for the gas engines. We're still here at the Ford Proving Ground. And they have, of course, the 7.3, we're all waited for that. And then they've got the new 6.8, a little bit smaller gas engine. I'm here with Paul Murray, and he's gonna tell us all about these engines. So this is the one we've had, the 7.3's Godzilla. Yep, yep, this is part of the Godzilla family. Okay. Well, this one here is gonna make you guys famous in the RV industry. They always waited for a big gas engine like we used to have. Sure. And it's replaced basically with the 6.8 V10 that we had a yeah, while we back. Had, yeah, that's right. So that means this is going to be in ambulances and RVs and everything because it's, it's such a good engine. 
And it's a push rod. It is. Push rod, two valve per cylinder. Yeah, and it's also, it's a, it's a port hydraulic injection. roller. Yep, it is port injection. And again, you only have fins, are all going to direct. So why do you guys go port? I know push rod, I like the idea of push rod. Yep. It's been around forever, and I'm not always fond of overhead cams, but so what does the port give you, the port injection? Well, the port injection, you know, you're trying to keep the cost down as much as you can, and you still be able to get all the performance that you want. We're trying to build uh, a torque-based engine for a truck, okay. so we're trying to make all the power that we can and still keep it as reasonable as possible. Well, that's good. That's, this is a nice size. I mean, I remember in the old days when everybody was trying to get bigger and bigger, Cadillac had a 500 cubic inch. Yeah. And now There's everybody's getting really efficient with these engines. 501, I think it was. 472 <laughs> and a 501, wow. I think. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so I like the old technology. And that push rod, I mean, that's what we've had forever. Yep. The tap it and the you rod. You got a and all hydraulic that. roller camshaft, so you have a roller lifter, which is used to be exotic race car stuff when we were young, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and now it's uh, made its way to the general public. You've got a closed valley block, so you're trying to keep the heat away from getting to the base of the manifold. You know, yeah. on the open valleys, they'd use the base of the manifold to seal off. Right. That part of the V of the block. Let's go now to the new 6.8, which we've all been waiting for. You know, same thing, push rod, port injection. We've, we're always trying to figure out, now, is this going to get better fuel mileage? Is it going to be cheaper? So what's the it's, advantage of going to that smaller both. engine? So you, you take the same base architecture that you have from our premium product, our 7.3 liter Godzilla, and you can, we took that engine and we changed the stroke on it, and we've changed the compression ratio a little bit to try to make it more efficient get all the power we can out of it, it will be more cost effective for the entry level buyer and the fleet owners. Okay. And we can also get the fuel economy, as you mentioned, out of it. Yeah, I'm hoping to get at least one or two. It'd be nice and make me all in, involved in that. And you know, too, uh, I guess right now, it's only it's offered kind of like a fleet, but it's for work truck. It's for the XL and the STX. Yeah, that's correct. And that's what I'm looking at, the STX maybe for my next truck. But yeah, that's... Uh, that's something else, and that's, uh, you'll, just, you'll see how, how well that market develops, and you know, hopefully you'll be selling them both like crazy, but it looks like a, a engine really uh, kind of catered toward, toward the, uh, the fleet department. And there's something else. Uh, what else did I want that was different? Oh yeah, transmission. I got, got to talk to the transmission guy because there are different transmissions between this and the other ones. They are. They're both 10-speed transmissions. Right. You know, and uh, you're using a 10R100, as you know, behind the 6.8 liter, and you use a 10R140 behind the 7.3 in both diesels. Yeah, that's uh, they cool. They have higher uh, towing capacity. You know, when you're talking about the premium powertrain lineup, you're going to be towing more weight, things like right. that. And so we're trying to, as you hit it, trying to keep it as economical as possible for fleet owners. So we want to reduce the cost as much as we possibly can. And there's a significant difference in the price right. between these powertrains. Right. And so we're trying to give them the most durability and reliability as possible for long life yeah. and still make, I mean, we've got a, an aluminum cylinder head V8 engine here making 405 horsepower, 445 foot-pounds of torque. Yeah, those are good numbers too. They are. And you know, that's that's interesting that the 7.3 has the same diesel or the same transmission as both the diesels. That's right. So that means that one's really beefy. It's beefy and it also has the, the PTO capability. Oh, yeah. yeah so, oh, so 6.8 so doesn't have a PTO. That's correct. Okay, well that makes sense because yeah. this is the one that's going to be in a lot of commercial applications, RVs, all of that and you know the ambulance world but yeah that is really cool so that's that's a good thing i'm I imagine i don't know if you're the transmission guy enough to know that you know, does that have different planetaries in the, the 140 versus the 100 or? well the 140 is a heavier duty transmission you know and uh so different so torque converter different maybe it maybe does have clutch a, plates. it does have a different torque converter and yeah. and then it's just a heavier duty transmission to carry more load or higher towing capacity yeah and that transmission has been around for a while so it it's has a proven been. transmission it has too. Been. Yeah. yeah yeah that's awesome well i appreciate that i remember back when the the, the six two uh, back when I had those, you know, you had a, also a heavy-duty transmission on that that was out of the diesel. And later on, they changed it to a little lighter duty. That's right. But, uh, yeah, I, I like the idea of having heavier-duty stuff. But, yeah, I'm really seriously looking at an STX truck next year with this engine. If I can get my fuel mileage out of it, i got to get 
a certain number there. Well, think about when you and I were kids. And do you remember what pickup trucks, the horsepower and torque used to be on a pickup truck back then? Yeah. This, I mean, you, you had people in the neighborhood that had high performance muscle cars that didn't have this type of performance oh, and now yeah. that you have in, in just your uh, entry level pickup truck. So oh, that's, yeah. that's how technology has changed, right? Well, you yeah, know, and you know, that's, that's, you've this. got variable cam timing and, and like I say, you have exotic features in this vehicle when you talk about roller cam shafts and oh, that. Oh, sure. You yeah, know, and aluminum cylinder heads. You know, yeah. what would you have given to have a nice set of aluminum cylinder heads when you were young? Well, I know, and, and now, we keep in, in, you know having the trade capacity higher on these trucks. You need a bigger engine. I mean, I think a six eight would be a really good replacement for that six two. Yes. And that's that's good. That's what it is. Your keeps making the stuff better. Well, thanks, Paul. I sure. appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Now I got to find you. out some more cool stuff here at the Ford Proving Ground. Thank you.